It's been a hectic workload for the Rural Fire Service's newest recruit. This will be another live run. Thor the air tanker on its third run in as many days. And today it was the township of Karua in Port Stephens in the line of fire. Fire crews are doing everything they can here to save this property. You can see now that the flames are just a few metres away. They've got the helicopter above us. I've got multiple crews here pumping water in all directions. Karua's 1,300 residents were warned they may have to leave, so they went into defensive mode, preparing for the worst. Feeling like you're well protected? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The wind is picking up a little bit, but... And this had an immediate impact. We had a spot fire break out on the top of our property, and so it was all, all hands on, on the station. Nearby, the Pacific Highway was clogged by smoke and fire trucks. <laughs> The blaze burning to the side of the road, forcing police to shut down the M1 north of Raymond Terrace. The objective is to stop the fire getting over to the eastern side. It left hundreds of drivers stranded and travel plans on hold. How long have you been waiting, mate? Uh, two and a half hours or so. How are you passing the time? <laughs> I've got my book. Further south at Cessnock, cooler temperatures and good work from water bombers last night took the heat out of what had been a dicey situation. But the fire was only contained, not controlled, and this afternoon it flared up again. At this point in time, we've got three breakouts. It's destined to be another long night with a long, hot summer yet to begin. This evening, the threat here in Karua has eased, but attentions have turned now to Swan Bay and Limeburners Creek, two nearby townships, and that is where the major fire is being fought this evening. We're hearing unconfirmed reports that sheds and possibly homes have been destroyed in this area, but it's such a remote and difficult area to get to that the messages that are getting out are quite difficult to ascertain exact details at this early stage. I can tell you for certain, however, that the Pacific highway in this area remains closed in both directions and firefighters tell us that it's going to be that way for several hours yet. The message is avoid this area if at all possible. There is a second major area of concern tonight and for more details on that we're going to cross live to Denny Old Post who's at the Rural Fire Service headquarters. Thanks, Gab. There is some good news for people in and around that fire at Cessnock. In the past few minutes, it has been downgraded to a watch and act. Now, it is still out of control, but the RFS hopes to make the most of conditions tonight to try to get a handle on it. Tomorrow and the coming days are a real concern. We're facing the dangerous conditions of strong winds, high temperatures and lightning, which could mean more fires. Now, we've just had confirmation that Sydney has been upgraded to a very high fire danger warning for tomorrow. Pete. Okay, Danielle, thank you.